In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel said to Saul, Stop! Let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. Saul said, Tell me. Samuel continued, Small as you may be in your own eyes, are you not head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord has anointed you king over Israel. The Lord sent you on a mission and said to you, Go, put these sinners, the Amalekites, under the ban, and make war on them until they are exterminated. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you fall on the booty and do what is displeasing to the Lord? Saul replied to Samuel, But I did obey the voice of the Lord. I went on the mission which the Lord gave me. I brought back Agag, king of the Amalekites. I put the Amalekites under the ban. From the booty, the people took the best sheep and oxen of what was under the ban to sacrifice them to the Lord your God in Gilgal. But Samuel replied, Is the pleasure of the Lord in holocausts and sacrifices or in obedience to the voice of the Lord? Yes, obedience is better than sacrifice, submissiveness better than the fat of rams. Rebellion is a sin of sorcery, presumption a crime of teraphim. Since you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. The word of the Lord. I will show God's salvation to the upright. I find no fault with your sacrifices. Your offerings are always before me. I do not ask more bullocks from your farms, nor goats from among your herds. I will show God's salvation to the upright. But how can you recite my commandments and take my covenants on your lips, you who despise my law and throw my words to the winds? I will show God's salvation to the upright. You do this, and should I keep silence? Do you think that I am like you? A sacrifice of thanksgiving honours me, and I will show God's salvation to the upright. I will show God's salvation to the upright. Alleluia, alleluia. Accept God's message for what it really is. God's message and not some human thinking. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. This proclamation taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. One day, when John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, some people came to Jesus and said to him, Why is it that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not? Jesus replied, Surely the bridegroom's attendants would never think of fasting while the bridegroom is still with them. As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they could not think of fasting, but the time will come for the bridegroom to be taken away from them, and then on that day they will fast. No one sews a piece of unshrunken cloth on an old cloak. If he does, the patch pulls away from it, the new with the old, and the tear gets worse. 
and nobody puts new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the wine will burst the skins, and the wine is lost, and the skins too. No, new wine, fresh skins. The good news, the gospel of the Lord. Every now and again, when my phone contract is due for renewal, the telco company will entice me with minimal costs, encouraging me to get a new phone or to renew my contract and they will provide me with a new phone. Nearly every time, it's really nothing new. More colors, more glitz, maybe a slightly better battery life. Essentially the same. It makes me wonder if my life and faith in Christ makes any real difference in how I live and engage with the world. Sometimes I can be very much in the core of today's gospel, where my Christian faith becomes one that is no different than the old, performing rituals, customs, obeying laws, and missing that relationship with Jesus Christ. A relationship that he speaks of as though of a marital union with the bridegroom. A life lived together as one with him in his compassion, in his forgiveness, and in his mercy. But you see, when we say all these things and we look at our first reading, we can be very frightened because the elephant in the room is really that first reading, isn't it? Did God really order the extermination of the Amalekites? Isn't this genocide? Saul's feelings might have been swayed by Israel's long hatred for the Amalekites, and he confused this with God's will. Was Samuel correct in thinking that God ordered this military expedition? Maybe, like Samuel and Saul, thinking that my relationship with God, with Christ, justifies me holding on to all grudges, unforgiveness, hurts. Just as in the first reading, we could easily be short-circuiting the steps between God's condemnation of sin among the Amalekites and Israel's barbarous response. Jesus invites us to a new a new relationship, one that gives us a new spirit, one that is totally contrasting with the ancients. In this way, the gospel and the first reading has a golden thread. It's inviting us to a newness, a newness that is seen in our relationship with Christ. May our day be one in which we contemplate the newness of our relationship with Christ that takes us and allows us to leave the old and to live the new afresh. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.